Hey everybody, Hugh Brownstone for Three Blind Men and an Elephant, and I'm delighted to be at the New York City press event with Mark Weir from Sony. Mark, it's nice to see you again. Hugh, it's always great to see you. It's been uh, about six months, six months, ten months, eight months. It's been eight months since uh, you introduced the 6300. Has it been that long? Man, we're here for two cameras. One, the guy that's in your hand right now, the Sony A6500, which you are positioning as the new flagship in the APS-C line. Take us through it. Exactly correct, you. This is our new A6500. We just announced it today on October 6th. And uh, this does not replace the 6300 or the 6000 at all. It's an addition to our A6000 line and everything that makes the 6300 so great, we've just built upon it with some new technology. So it has all of the great characteristics for video capture of the A6300. That fantastic focusing system with all those autofocus points across 65% of the frame with 4K at 24p or 30p at up to 100 megabits per second recording in the camera or 422 HDMI output with full width of the sensor capture with no pixel binning or line skipping. But on top of that, We've also added a new touch focus capability to the LCD. So merely by touching the LCD, you can choose your focus point. You can also use the LCD while you're framing with the eye level viewfinder. You can use the LCD as a touchpad to touch and drag from one subject to another in the frame for easily created focus pulls while you're rolling. That's incredible. I'm sorry, I just have to interrupt. That really is incredible. Let me ask you a couple of things about this focus. How much of this was in the planning stages a while ago, and how much of this is a response to feedback you were getting in the marketplace? Well, pretty much everything that we develop from a technology standpoint, uh, we are taking feedback from the market to give us direction. We always are looking at how photographers and videographers are using cameras, especially our cameras, and what they're looking for that doesn't exist. And uh, to fill those gaps for the performance that they require and the performance that they expect. And one of them, a perfectly good example of that, particularly in the A6500, is we've decided to put in-camera image stabilization into the body of the A6500 without any increase in size. That's, that's pretty ridiculous. So rather than relying on lens shift image stabilization, we now have a mechanism in the camera that can shift the APS-C Super 35 sized image sensor through five axis of compensation while shooting stills and video. And it's the first time a five-axis imager shift stabilization system has ever been created in a mirrorless APS-C camera. And the value of this is that any lens that you can attach to the camera, of course our lenses, but even lenses that were created before image stabilization was even invented, uh, can now enjoy image stabilization. Cinema lenses can now enjoy image stabilization wide aperture primes that would previously never before have had image stabilization can now enjoy image stabilization and it's not just the pitch and yaw correction that you'll find in lens shift image stabilization but also x shift y shift and most importantly for videographers roll compensation as well so to be able to do this within the compact confines of the A6000 series body without any increase in size, we think is a real achievement, but much more importantly, a real advantage to photographers and videographers alike. Now Mark, the thing that really strikes me about this 5-axis IBIS is that it makes G Master lenses attractive to A6500 owners. Back in uh, Miami, had a chance to play with these lenses. Incredible, but because I have an A6000, A6300, no image stabilization in the lenses, now you've got it. Yeah, many of our, well, most of our APS-C frame lenses in our E-mount lineup have in-lens image stabilization, and those lenses are advantaged with 
five axis of correction now instead of just pitch and yaw in the lens. But the real value is some of the wide aperture full frame lenses that we make, or for that matter, the wide aperture that lenses that most manufacturers make can't really uh, include image stabilization. So by putting it in the camera, all of those lenses can now enjoy image stabilization. But think about all of the lenses that exist that can work with this camera that can't have image stabilization. Cinema lenses, our entire A-mount line of lenses, all of those lenses can now be used with A6500 and enjoy image stabilization. So it's really quite a breakthrough. So we've got the in-body image stabilization, we've got the touchscreen, two huge headline features. But you're also using a new processor with this camera and you're asserting that there's even higher image quality than in the 6300, which I am blown away by as it is. So tell us about that. Well, we're actually using the same Beyonzex processor that we're using in our other cameras, but we've added another front-end LSI to work together with the Beyonzex processor. Large-scale integrated circuit? Large-scale integrated circuit, LSI. Um, and what we can do is improve the low noise performance at low light levels. So in the past, of course, A6300 was rated to operate at up to 51,200 ISO, but now with the additional processing power of the front end LSI, we can get even cleaner results than we could with the A6300. We're using the same image sensor, but with this new pair of processing ICs, we can really enjoy even better image quality than before, particularly in low lighting. However, for the still photographer side, the other great aspect of the LSI is it increases the buffer depth dramatically so that in this camera you can actually shoot at 8 frames per second for over 200 frames. In fact, over 300 frames in JPEG Fine. And that means that you can continuously shoot at 11 frames per second for over 20 seconds to be able to capture the decisive moment. So it's this processing power that's been added uh, with the A6500 that provides this near endless shooting capability and we're particularly excited at the opportunities it can provide for still shooters to help them capture the decisive moment. This is really interesting. I have to say Cartier-Bresson is one of my all-time heroes but I think with that kind of burst rate and that kind of buffer you may have to coin a new phrase. It's the decisive mini event. I mean, 20 seconds is ridiculous. That's great. I want to go back, though, to the low noise performance, and I want to go into the video side of low noise performance. Uh, when I took a look at the 6300 and the A7R2, I was surprised by how close they were up to the 6300's limit of 25,600. With these new circuits, is it one stop improved, two stops improved? How would you rate it? Well, the primary improvement's coming from the image sensor. Um, much of our image sensor technology has been driven towards the idea of maximizing the light gathering area of each pixel and also speeding up the pathway off of the image sensor to provide better low noise performance. By increasing the size of the photodiode and increasing the speed of readout, we can do great things with image processing and great things with noise control. And that's really the story of uh, what we've done with our A7R2 and also our A6300 and A6500. The LSI provides a little bit of extra processing power for the Beyonds X so it can have even more sophisticated noise control. And that's the combination of the image sensor and the processor pair to deliver even better image quality. So when you say more control, do you mean it changes the pattern of noise or effectively reduces the amount of noise, making it comparable to, let's say, the 6300 one stop more? Yeah, I'm not prepared to indicate how many stops of additional dynamic range uh, because we don't have a rating for that, although um, you know, that will be discovered uh, quickly as photographers and videographers use the camera. Um, but I can say that um, it's not so much the processing as the throughput that's being improved to allow more sophisticated processing. The, the processing pattern areas remain, that algorithm remains the same. 
um, but it's the overall performance that's been speeded up. And that's particularly valuable for video when you're capturing large amounts of data at very high frame rates. Got it. Okay, one other thing you talk about, still the same, same uh, sensor, but you've managed to cram five axis IBIS into the same body? Yes. Yeah, so the, the body itself is of identical dimensions and shape. Um, we have made some subtle changes to the body, however, in the area of the grip. The grip is a little bit deeper than it was in the past to provide a, a more secure hold. We've also added a key to the top for a, some slight additional customization as well. Cool. And speaking of cool, the thermal performance of this is the same as the 6300, even with that additional complexity? Well, I have uh, shot 4K video with this camera, and I've shot a 29 minute and 50 second clip without any difficulty at 100 megabits per second. So I would say that the overall user experience and the overall performance um, is quite the same as 6300. We'll know more as we uh, test it extensively. Um, but again, to be able to realize that level of performance uh, with sensor shift image stabilization is uh, quite an achievement in and of itself. Well, congratulations, Mark. Truly phenomenal. Uh, I overuse that word, but in this case, I think it's well deserved. You don't have the RX100 Mark V right here at this table. It's sitting behind us, and we're not going to cut away to go get one. But can you just talk to us for a couple of minutes about the Mark V? Sure. With uh, Mark V, what we've done is uh, another world's first. Um, we've allowed, w what we've done is we've created a new image sensor. It's still a one inch uh, stacked CMOS uh, reverse structure image sensor as used in our RX cameras previously. But for the very first time, we've overcome one of the great limitations of fixed lens compact cameras by improving the focusing system through the use of phase detect autofocus. We've actually managed to put 315 phase detect AF points on the one inch image sensor to be able to provide a compact, pocketable camera with the focus accuracy and focus response that you would typically find out of a professional digital SLR. You're talking so we, five hundredths of a second. Well, we have five one hundredths of a second AF lock speed, uh, the fastest of any camera we've tested, and we also have um, AF points over 65% of the uh, of the area of the sensor, so we now have the tracking and um, accuracy necessary to capture it at, at incredible, phenomenal rates with amazing focus response in terms of tracking capability, particularly with fast moving uh, or erratically moving subjects, uh, not only across the frame but towards the camera. So we're particularly pleased with that. However, in the RX100 Mark V, we also add the large-scale integrated circuit together with the Beyond's X processor. So we've been able to increase the capture rate at full resolution, so 20 megapixel resolution, at up to 24 frames per second. And uh, that frame rate of capture can continue for over six seconds. So that's over 300 frames at 20 megapixels for 24 frame per second capture. And to put that into, a, into perspective, even a professional 4K video camera is capturing eight megapixel frames at 24p. Obviously this is not the same, quite the same challenge, but imagine if you could have a still camera that could capture 20 megapixel frames at 24p for up to, well actually slightly over six seconds just to put it into perspective of what's been accomplished. So the ability to capture at 24 frames per second at full resolution um, is, is really quite a breakthrough and permits photographers to be able to capture uh, the decisive moments in ways that they may never have been able to before. It's interesting because at the start of your uh, press conference, uh, several of the executives were sharing slides showing that the enthusiast sector is the one that's growing, the professional center is remaining constant, and the pure consumer or uh, beginner is decreasing. And with this kind of autofocus system in the RX100 Mark V, and now with 5-axis uh, in-body image stabilization in the 6300, you are aiming both cameras up market in a big way. Yeah, it's no secret that um, uh, uh, photography and image capture is capturing the imagination of more and more uh, consumers and end users. 
photo activity is growing and growing. But at the same time, photo activity with other devices than cameras is um, where a lot of that growth is coming from. So dedicated cameras themselves have been declining. There's no secret there. However, the part of the camera business that is growing is the, uh, the part that's aimed at enthusiasts, high performance and uh, high technology cameras that allow photographers to, and videographers to do things that they wouldn't be able to do any other way is really what's att attracting the consumer's attention. And that's a, um, the primary direction in which we're putting our device development so that we can deliver cameras and video cameras that can allow photographers and videographers to capture that which they can't capture any other way. And only by listening to what they can't do and what they would like cameras to do are we inspired to be able to develop these kinds of capabilities to inspire photographers and videographers uh, to use cameras to uh, take their art to the next level. Which and that's what? really what's, uh, what's driving our camera development. And, and that is what Kondo is, yes. inspiring creativity. Exactly. Well, again, Mark, always a pleasure. Thank you for this. Uh, I'm really interested in seeing how the touch focus works when my eye is up to the viewfinder. I think that's really pretty neat. Um, and it was also interesting just about the RX100 Mark V to learn that fully 25% of the uh, market for the RX100 Mark V is coming from interchangeable lens uh, camera users and professionals. Yeah, when we study uh, who's using these cameras, we find that uh, they're frequently used by professionals and enthusiasts whose other cameras are um, large interchangeable lens professional level digital SLRs. And they use um, RX in many cases um, as a camera when they're not able to use those cameras. And their expectation is that they will perform just as well. And that's why we're developing these models. Mark Weir from Sony. I'm Hugh Brownstone for Three Blind Men and an Elephant. See you next time. Again, thanks so much, man. Thanks, Hugh. Congratulations.